This is Information Service Engineering Lecture Number 7, Knowledge Graphs, Part 2. In this section of the lecture, you will learn about the Resource Description Framework, RDF, which is a simple data model for the Semantic Web. We have already learned about the Semantic Web Technology Stack, which consists of all of the protocols that are also subsumed under the W3C or authorized by the W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium, which is responsible for the web standards that you already know, like URI or HTTP or also other web protocols. And thereby, they also did the standardization of semantic web protocols. And we are now going to have a look on the blue section that you see here in the layer cake. And um, this is the level information exchange. And here we are going to talk about the resource description framework. And the, re uh, the examples you will see, they are based on um, climate change and the greenhouse effect. Okay, so we start again with a simple challenge. How do I represent the following fact? The greenhouse effect has been discovered in 1824. How do I do that? in an intuitive way. Good idea, a uh, good question. So we have the greenhouse effect. We know 1824, it has been discovered. You could do this, for example, here intuitively with a directed graph by simply putting both ends, which is the subject of the sentence into a node and also the object, which is 1824 um, also here. And then you have in between has been discovered in. Okay, that's rather easy. So we have here the subject, we have here some kind of a predicate and we have an object, 1824. Now the question is, if we want to transfer this simple structure into the web, how do we represent these words in the web? I could use URIs, of course. I identify something and access something via URIs in the, in the web. And we have already heard that, of course, identification and access in the web, no matter whether it's a document or not, I can do this via URIs. So let's assume we have a URI for the greenhouse effect, which points to a representation of the greenhouse effect in the web, which might be some information page or a page which contains, you know, information about the greenhouse effect and we might have also a uri for a predicate has been discovered in and then we have an object so and either this is also a uri if it's a thing however if it's a value or as we say a literal then it might be also only you know a string for example or a number or something like that so this is the way how in rdf exactly these kind of small sentences are represented and these sentences are called RDF triples simply for the sake that they consist always of a subject represented by a URI, a property which is connected to that subject also represented as a URI and then an object which takes some, you know, what's the target, so which two entities are somehow connected via the property. If it's an entity, then it's a URI. If it's a value we are pointing to, then it's a literal. However, you might have noticed now that the predicate we were talking about now is referred to as property in RDF, but this is only to avoid confusion with further language elements we might see here, so therefore, take this as granted and also it has uh, legacy reasons. So in some forms of logics, you don't talk about predicates. If you want to uh, name relations there, they are often referred to as so-called properties or kind of properties. Okay, now let's translate exactly this structure or get an example for that. We have here for the greenhouse effect, an information page at DBpedia, one of the most famous and popular knowledge bases on the web. We have for the property that something has been discovered at a specific point in time, also a URI pointing to the DBP ontology. And then we have a value since, you know, it was discovered in 1824 and thereby as we now look at this as a value and not as an entity, we might write it as a string. Um, one important thing here is 
there is a notation for RDF, which is referred to as n triples serialization. So these triples are serialized as so-called n triples. And thereby all URIs that you see here are written in these angle brackets. And a string, for example, is here written in double quotes. And to make clear that after this triple, I have finished my sentence, it's like in a real sentence, you end with a full stop with a period. That's it. And this is, of course, equivalent to the graph representation we have seen here. And you can also do the graph representation here directly with the URIs we have talked for, uh, uh, about or also with um, the value we have seen here with a string value. Looking or considering here um, a graph, it's rather easy then to connect, you know, new statements or new information we have about that subject about the greenhouse effect with new statements and then continue, you know, let our graph grow. So we could see here, for example, that the greenhouse effect has been discovered in 1824 and there is a discoverer, so the guy who has discovered it, and that was Joseph Fourier. And we also see that Joseph Fourier, for example, is a person. And another thing we might see is that the birth date of Joseph Fourier was the 21st of March 1768 and also that the birthplate was Auxerre and Auxerre of course is located in France. This is quite nice for small examples but of course a graph edges and nodes of course are not as easily transferred into a computer so therefore there is a serialization of that kind of graph and we have seen already the n triples and we might write all what we saw here also then in forms of triples and you see here again we have triples for the greenhouse effect mentioned in blue so this is always the subject here we have triples for our properties they are here mentioned in red and we have triples for the object part either a value or a literal mentioned in green and all of these things, of course, have different URIs. And you might now wonder, so where the hell should I know these URIs from? But you will see in the course of this lecture, this is not so complicated. There are standard vocabularies available. You might search for vocabularies on the web and you might use some that are already used as reference or hubs. So like, for example, the Wikipedia ontology or also Wikidata is also a hub in the web of data, which might be used here as a reference for things to identify and to access information of. Okay, all of these subjects you see here and also some of the objects are so-called individuals. So they are entities which belong probably to a specific class of things. As we already have seen, Joseph Fourier, that's kind of a person, of course, and Auxerre, this should be something like a location. So, but it's an individual, so it's a distinct location. It's a distinct person and also greenhouse effect is a distinct thing. So therefore, these are so-called individuals within our triples. On the other hand, you see here also classes here, for example, on the object part. So there are classes or concepts like, for example, you have here the greenhouse effect. Um, is the subject of climate or has the subject climate change and also greenhouse effect has the subject. Um, yeah, it's related to the atmosphere, of course. However, you also have your Joseph Fourier and Joseph Fourier here is connected uh, or is of type on uh, person and person belongs to the Wikipedia ontology. This is a class. So we have classes and concepts which might stand here, for example, on the object side. Also, we have literals. This is now again the green part. You see here, I can have numbers. I can have, for example, also real strings. I can have dates. I can even have um, typed uh, literals. Like for example, we have here um, latitude and longitude, which are given in floats. But then I have also to give the type, which also has here, as you see, a specific kind of encoding. And in the middle, we have all of the properties. They are here in red and also thick. Also the properties as we have seen are URIs. And if you look here at the prefixes of these URIs, the prefixes, they point to standard vocabularies and ontologies. So 
For example, the DBpedia ontology contains lots of properties and classes which can be used here to denote uh, things and also then to create triples and to create statements and facts about things. And there are other vocabularies or ontologies that you identify simply here by the prefix where they are coming from. Some of them or most prominent are issued by W3C and this is usually then the RDF syntax for example or you have another one here it's um, DC terms this is also rather important or interesting vocabulary that we will see how it is used later on. Okay so much for the structure of RDF. So we have already heard that there are URIs and there are literals and usually URIs identify and references resources in a unique way. So these resources are unique, they are referenced by a URI. If the thing is not a resource then I have a literal which usually describes a data value and literals usually don't have a separate existence on their own. So you see here literals in red, this is again greenhouse effect was discovered 1824 and the discoverer of course was an entity it was Joseph Fourier so therefore here in blue. Talking about literals we already have heard that besides merely strings or numbers there might be also data types so type literals can be expressed here with the help of another vocabulary and these are the so-called XML schema data type so you take simply already existing XML schema data types that you see here um, and listed here on the on the right side and uh, they can be used then to express here um, the meaning of exactly a data type. So as you see here a simple example um, so namespace for type literals here uh, for XML schema is this one and here semantics is a string and to denote a specific data type Usually you write your values here always in double quotes. If you miss everything else, this value is interpreted always as a string, as a character string. If you then have this double hat and then you have another URI, this URI usually then stands for a data type. And you see here, I can explicitly say that semantics here is a string, or I can say that this number here is of type float or I can say that this string that I have here can be interpreted as a date. Of course, then it should be a correct date, otherwise it doesn't make sense. So this is the way how you really type your data types and your literals here in RDF. One more thing, which is, um, let's say, another update to the possibilities you have there to denote what a specific value means and how it is interpreted you can denote the language so the natural language of the text and you do this here by the ampersand and then you use this two digit language code that you have here or two letter language code for semant semantic this is the German semantics you have DE which stands for Deutsch which is German and you have semantics here if the ampersand EN EN stands for English FR for example would stand for uh, France or French and IT would stand for Italian. So this is according to an ISO standard and abbreviation to make clear what is the natural language where exactly this string comes from. Another particularity among RDF is that we have seen now always these nodes were entities or they were literals. There is also the possibility that a node simply denotes uh, let's say an individual without explicitly stating or identifying this individual which is something like you uh, provide a reference for a thing that exists without specifying exactly what it is. So you could interpret this here that something has been discovered in 1824 and that something has been discovered by Joseph Fourier without explicitly stating that this of course is climate change but this then stand would stand for all things which have been discovered in that year and which have been discovered by Joseph Fourier without explicitly stating what it is. So these kind of existential uh, assumptions or statements can be made with the help of so-called blank notes. However, these blank notes cannot be referenced from outside 
an RDF file because they don't have a URI. How, how do you want to reference them? However, they might be useful for structural or put in their structural information. We will see how this works later on. So they cannot be referenced externally. However, when I want to put RDF into the computer, I can make use of several serializations. We have seen here so far the N triple notation, which of course, if you have large files of information, becomes rather crowded and it's really difficult to understand. Therefore, there are some serializations which work, let's say, with lots of aggregations and abbreviations, like for example, the turtle serialization, which is much easier to write. Of course, for the parser, then it's harder to parse, but it's, it's easier to read and to write. So we will do furthermore in this lecture than turtle serialization. And there are other serializations like, for example, JSON-LD. Now every software engineer should be happy because this is a JSON version of here exactly RDF. You might now ask what is LD? LD stands for linked data. So why haven't they called it JSON-RDF? Yeah, to make it easy, simply to not scare off the software engineers because RDF often is related to, yeah, this is something highly complicated that nobody needs. But talking about linked data, yeah, yeah, this is easy. This is this is nice. So therefore they have called it JSON LD and not JSON RDF. OK, however, in the next part of the lecture, we will further on now use RDF turtle and RDF turtle serialization will be the next topic in our lecture.